Joe here again, just an update on where we are with the T143 project. Had a few changes since I um, posted the last video. Got some brakes on the thing finally. Had some help with um, getting the twin discs on the front. Howard Mesner from Mesner Motorcycle Metal in the States, I think he's down Florida way. He sent us uh, a kit and what we got, he's, he's supplied the, um, the adapters, it's an off the shelf uh, Brembo four pot calibre and some nice floating discs, they're um, 320mm I think these ones are they're uh, brake tech floating discs stainless steel numbers um, bl bloody fantastic, the thing actually stops now, it's brilliant We've used 2004 I think they are uh, V-Rod lowers and custom chrome 2 inch over tubes uh, reason it went 2 inch over we ended up putting a, a 19 inch aluminium front wheel on it um, wanted to get a wider tyre, get more tyre on the ground of course we're taking the 21 off and putting the 19 on, we lost a bit of ground height and I want to keep as much ground clearance as we can on this thing so we put the longer tubes in and um, I managed to gain a bit more more ground clearance while we're at it, which is bloody good. Um, brakes are fantastic now. I've never actually owned a Hardwood brakes before, the scary things, uh, but it's shit hot now. And using the Brembo radial pull caliper, uh, master cylinder rather, add SMS and your Plymouth there, machine up a, a nice mirror mount so we can keep the mirrors on the bike. Um, so, yeah, the front end's worked out really well. It's not hard to put uh, twin discs on, a, on the front of a diner. Well, it's not that bloody straightforward either, but um, certainly not impossible and well worth doing. Uh, what else we done? Um, put the 70mm SNS throttle hog throttle body on there now. It's a cable operated one. Um, this is actually the third one that they made. I uh, was running the 62mm horsepower incorporated throttle body cable operated again. Um, SNS has just released the cable operated throttle hog, so we put that on now. Um, I was making 158 horsepower and 162 foot pound with a 62 mil on. Uh, we did some more dyno tuning today with the 70 mil on there and managed to get 168 horsepower and 166 foot pound, which we thought wasn't too bad. Um, and then we took the, the air cleaners off, went straight to 170, or whisker over 170 horsepower and 167 foot-pound. Um, what it is, this is actually the, the, the off-the-shelf SNS turn length uh, induction, but I, I cut the hell out of it and um, put on a 70 mil mount at the back, uh, made up my own adapter plates and so on. This is the, the air cleaner that comes with the, um, with the SNS 70 mil, but as you can see, it's, it's quite wide. And I wanted to keep as much knee clearance as I could, uh, but we'll be putting this one on in the next few days and uh, try what sort of buddy horsepower we make with that, because obviously it flows a lot better than, than these twin ones do. And I might also open this up even further still. There's obviously a restriction in here uh, where it necks down, um, which will further increase the horsepower we can and torque we can make out, of, make out of this thing. We can get some uh, get some more airflow in it. So whisk over 170 horsepower and 167 foot-pounds. We're pretty confident those numbers are true because we've, we've had this bike on uh, three separate dynos around New Zealand and they're all saying the same thing within you know, a couple of horsepower within Kui. So it's, um, we know that other people in the, in the States with the 143s are making these figures as well. So it's, uh, it's a serious bit of gear. Um, I put the Baker 7-speed in since the last video too, I think. Uh, chewed up third gear on the stock gearbox. Stock gearbox did surprisingly well. It lasted all the time that I had the T124 in here. Uh, but yeah, not long after I put the 143 in, it just spat the dummy. Didn't like it at all. So um, put the 7 speed in there, bulletproof. Uh, it's nice to have that 7th gear. Um, really nice to have the, the uh, straight cut 1st, 2nd and 3rd gear. Get the power down a lot easier. And, um, and a lower 1st gear too. So it's easier around town. This bike's really easy to ride around town. It's got a lot of power, but you, know, you get the thing tuned right and um, you can just take it to the shops, no problem at all. Get there kind of quick, of course. 
Um, what else have we done? Oh, the yeah, the rear sprocket. I was having trouble with the sprocket. It was chewing out, as you can see here, on the side of the sprockets on the inside. Now, we thought we'd had the, um, uh, the sprocket alignment all ballsed up, but we had straight edges on there and it was within half a mil, everything was bang on. What we've since discovered, it's making that much bloody talk with the, the dished aluminium sprocket. What it's doing is actually trying to straighten out the sprocket, or try, uh, no, it's trying to, trying to curve it even further. So the torque is, is, is curving the, the sprocket down and bending, bending it over, making it more of a concave um, sprocket out of it. And of course that shifts the sprocket over to the, over to the left and, um, and the chain wears into the right hand side. Went through this several times with a few different sprockets and determined that's exactly what's going on. Um, the aluminium sprocket's just too soft and there's not, not enough meat in there. It's just crushing the sprocket basically. As you can see it's ripping teeth off it and just pulling this thing to bits. Uh, so we're going with a, a steel sprocket this time. Made our own one. Um, of course that's straight and no more problems with, um, with bending teeth and so on. That's worked out really, really good. Um, the more power we make out of this thing, the, the more stuff we break. Uh, I've got a, a manual adjusted primary chain in there. Took the uh, automatic adjuster out for the obvious reasons. Um, got the Baker manual adjuster. Uh, end up bending that as well, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, Baker, fantastic to deal with. They just sent us another one, and um, they're a little bit beefier in the in the walls, so that seems to have fixed that as well. So no more bending of that. Uh, compensator sprockets, chew those up. I've got a screaming eagle compensator sprocket in there now. That seems to have lasted well. Um, Jag all cooler, stainless steel mesh all cooler, uh, filter rather, and with the associated. Um, all cooler, so that's worked out really, really good. Got a, br a catch can on this one, so I don't like putting the, um, uh, the the breather back into the engine. Rather, any oily, misty type bloody fumes go um, outside of the engine. Don't want to lower the octane um, of the well, oil mist. Obviously, lowers the octane, and that's the last thing you want for making bloody making horsepower. Um, running the Daytona Twin Tech at the moment. Had a really, really good run with that. Uh, Kevin and the guys over at uh, Daytona, very, very helpful. Um, it's a good product, and it's been really easy to tune. We're building up our own map. Of course, the maps don't exist for a, for a 143. No one's really done them. Uh, certainly not, not with a cable. We're not with a cable operator anyway. That's the um, been the tricky thing. So we've had to make our own map, and uh, we're almost there. Got a few things to sort out on the, on the idle, but um, all up pretty happy with the old girl now. So it's making pretty good power. Whisker over 170 horsepower, 167 foot-pounds, and we know we've got a bit more left than that. Um, so we get rid of the restrictions in the air cleaner and um, put the big S and S one back on there and, and see what that does. So we're going to be very interested to see what it does. So yeah, S and S been great to deal with, fantastic product. If we've had any problems, and we've had some problems in the past, but they've always stood by the product and always um, corrected anything. It's just fantastic gear. Highly recommend if you want to get some serious bolt and power. And um, these 143s is definitely the go. Have fun.